everybody doing look at that view look at that view nice view okay <laughs> so hi 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 it's me again maria maria <laughs> um all right let me just i'm trying to I need to take that phone stand from Kellis. I'm trying to get a way to to let the phone stand. Whew. Okay, I think that'll do it. So. <laughs> So I am back. Let me make sure it's recording. Right. I have this crazy habit of going ahead and talking and nothing is being recorded. So um so I hope everybody is doing well. Everybody who lands upon this video is doing well. Um I know that the last time I promised to since I got home to start back doing videos and stuff on a regular but Y'all know how it gets with baby and, you know, I mean, now he's a lot older and also I feel like I have, um, I'm more flexible now. Like I have a lot more, not really freedom, but space to be able to accommodate, um, these, these, um, to, to be able to accommodate the channel right um this channel is not just me sharing my experiences and testimonies and whatever i feel to talk about in hopes of inspiring or you know motivating others but it's kind of like a i guess a kind of video journal for me because it is be really nice to look back and see stuff that i've done experiences that i've had and listen to myself because it's it's a reminder of things that I've learned and you know things the Lord has taught me and took me through right so so yeah so this is also beneficial for me um so I came out today to really do a couple deliveries I started back making um products right let me just give you all a little <laughs> a little sneak peek so I do soaps and stuff right this is one of my soaps it's a kitty soap it's meant for the feminine genitalia is that right <laughs> right to cleanse it because you know they say um water only but let's be real water only doesn't cut it and so it's nice to have we can't use harsh chemicals and stuff down there so it's nice to have something um suitable for that area right um i also have oils this is one of my body oils um it's good for like razor bumps um it's very healing moisturizing it's good for all body for massages for under the breasts of you know heavy set women tend to have a little issue and stuff um topically under their boobs because of sweating and stuff like that so yeah that's good for that this is a small kitty soup <laughs> and um i recently started doing butters buddy butters this is one of my butters this is a brightening buddy butter right um also do complexion complexion soups right now i have um a package for 
to a complexion, a body, and a, and a facial. Right? Um, right. So this is not advertising. I mean, well, I just letting you guys know. It's, but it's not about these products today. Right? So it's just about me catching up and, you know, chit-chatting a bit, letting you all know what's up. So really and truly, um, I wanted to to touch on some of the things that have been going on so like y'all would know well i hope y'all would know if not i guess you'll have to go back and check the other videos right um i have a baby that being after having my last child at well the child before um who is 22 22 now right so i have a i have two other kids before in their 20s right and the lord had shown me back in 2019 i believe it was that you know he'd give me a baby right that i was going to be pregnant and he was giving me a son so y'all i have that son and you know even before he got here even before he was even um even conceived or even when he was just a thought because you know i got the dream from the lord and stuff and so i was expecting to have a son because god is a god of his word he keeps his promises he doesn't say things and not do it right he does what he says and i have always proven that right and so um right so even when my son was just a thought i knew that i was going to be raising him up for the lord right um raising him up for god saying that i mean everything totally giving him up and submitting to the lord in terms of um what he expects of me as a parent what he expects of my child you know just r raising him up in god's way according to his word right so i had known when he was just a thought that i was going to homeschool right my other kids i was in the world when i had them and um i definitely was more of a friend i guess i wanted it to be that way that i would be more of a friend to them and so i guess i was more of a friend than a parent and that definitely comes with issues i know some people say you know um my kid is my best friend this that that nothing is wrong with being a friend to your children but there has to be balance you have to find balance between being a parent and being a friend you can't be all the way to the left you can't be all the way to the right there has to be balance i have learned that right and as much as i want to be my son's friend i have to be his parent first right and uh, um so i knew that i was going to homeschool right i uh, i was not going to give my child up to the system now don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with parents who um send their kids to school put put this their kids in school and stuff like that you know as long as you put god first right because the schools the world in fact to me they're trying every way possible to take god out of everything there are people that even schools even that started their roots may have been started in the church and in christianity but they have gone so far from that right and so many things are happening and even teachers it seems like people most people going into into these careers just for the money and i mean these have been things that have been going on a long time but but now it just seems so saturated like it is it, 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 it's just everywhere you turn you're seeing these issues more elaborated right and so um you know you're going to these schools and it's like the kids not even doing anything really and and the teachers just not the passion they have no passion there you know 
and not only that sometimes you're doing your best you're sending your kids to school you're doing your best to, still to incorporate your faith and god and you're teaching them you're raising them as best you can you know according to the way of the lord and yet you send them out and they mix with other kids whose parents you know not trying as much as you not seeking the lord and they could be influenced they could be influenced negatively and be exposed to so many things so many things that corrupt them right and um homeschooling is not without its challenges but that is the way that i opt to go so that i would better be able to um protect my child and to control have some sort of control over what he's exposed to right so so um right so yeah um recently i'll tell you all this too recently i had a now this is a promise i made to the lord eh? within he and i having our discussions i basically told him lord i am giving this child up to you i am you know asking you to guide me guide me how to raise up this child in your way and stuff like that and this homeschooling thing became you know impressed upon me and then covid came and all those things happened and it was like um it was like more confirmation to me in the sense that i think that this is what god wants like i believe he allowed all of that to happen in order for a lot of people to come to a realization of what's happening what they're really doing and to put things into perspective especially in terms of their family and children right um because i think during that covid season a lot of people decided to to homeschool because there is a community you know it seems kind of far-fetched us here in the caribbean but there is a community not just outside because i mean in foreign in america and stuff it's there is a big community of homeschoolers and stuff like that but i mean down here i there's there's a, a community a lot of people have been um have been turning into that right um so yeah um so recently right i kind of really i'm not going to lie as i said it's not without its issues right i became kind of overwhelmed like you know being around my child i love i don't have to tell you guys i really love my son right like i love him and now me being older more mature and going through motherhood it's like i'm enjoying every bit of it even the kind of tricky times when you're tired and you you know and the being i try not to say miserable and stuff like that i don't say things like that over i don't declare things like that over my child i don't believe that we should be doing things like that so i avoid saying words like that right and really and truly he, they they aren't miserable they they are now learning they are active they seeing the world for the first time so they're learning everything this is you know it's a beautiful thing when you look at it in that aspect that you are getting to be a part of their learning experience and them seeing the world and getting to know the world and you know before i was i mean when i first started having my kids i was still a teen and i had them back to back right and i just was caught up in everything in the wrong way and you know so things used to get to me i used to handle things differently now that i am living for christ and i look at things different i handle things different you know um so yeah so i am enjoying every bit every bit of it right um even the things that would tend to have a lot of people frustrated i'm really enjoying it right um and then sometimes when it gets kind of too much and as always remember this is your gift this is your gift god give you know he gave this child to you this is your gift right and so that does kind of help pull me back as well keep me grounded you know to know that most definitely this is 
you know what you know that they say children are a blessing from god which they are right um and stuff like that but i can say you know i can say i have the privilege to say that god literally he literally told me that i was going to have this child he literally gave me this child right and when i got the name of my son i think i told i told that story in another um video his name is nathan and when i woke up out of the dream i am um, i heard that name nathan i heard it and i was like nathan i was like lord that is you where what, what is where you mean nathan and i went and searched searched looked up the name and the meaning of nathan is gift from god right and so all that was confirmation for, to me that yeah he's given me a son right so anyway um so he is literally my gift from god okay <laughs> that is so amazing so um so yeah so i know that i was going to homeschool and stuff and so the other day i still kind of got overwhelmed and um i was like you know because sometimes not sometimes most times his dad is really busy really busy and so it's just me and so being around your kid like 24 7 they're just around you and you, sometimes you're not even getting chance to really rest or time for yourself because by the time they fall asleep and you spin around they're up again you know and nate have this way he just be on my boobs all night like all night i think they just call it cluster feeding or something like that he is there all night so i don't really sleep to say sleep right through the night because as he come on and you know i i'll, I'll be up right so um so yeah it kind of got a bit overwhelming and i was like i have to best i send him to i am saying it with my mouth but in my mind i'm telling myself maria you're saying that but you know you ain't going to do that right so i am saying like i had to send i had to send him to school you know i had to send nathan to school i tell him his father that right and um so i'm like i have to send him to school at least when he go to school i'll have a certain period that you know i'll be able to do me a little bit and then when he comes home i'll make sure and put in the time and put in the work with him and you know and <laughs> And then, well, his father was like, well, so now you know you're going to have to go on, um, um, you're going, you'll have to give him his shots and stuff. Because I, he hasn't been to a doctor. When I say he has not been back to the hospital or, or to anywhere since he left the hospital with me. I just say God is his physician and nature is the prescription right <laughs> but i mean i'll take him to like just for you know check up and stuff but i'm really looking for like a um and is a natio naturopathic doctor i think that's what you just call them or a naturopathic um um pediatrician right somebody who is more on the natural side instead of the regular doctors and pediatricians who want to prescribe like medicines and you know what i mean so anyway so i'm still seeking out for that i got a couple names that i need to go through and and call and stuff you know but that is really what i want to um to do so i i did not give him any and and let me tell you it's not like I've seen anything wrong with people who give the give their kids shots. Can remember my other two kids, they had all their shots. I as a child had all my shots, right? But I really want to trust hundred percent and believe hundred percent in the Lord with this child. This child is my heritage from the Lord, and I want to go hundred percent for the Lord behind it. You understand? So um so he had no shots and all of that and 
So his father was saying, so not what you're saying now, you had to go on. Oh, I was saying that down the road, you know, you could always go and, and, and give them the shots when they're older. Now, in my mind, before he was even born, I already was telling myself, I am not, I'm not doing that. I want to go the way of just natural all the way and for the Lord all the way. And you know what I mean? But I'm always praying about it and asking God for guidance, right? And, um is something that you could actually go when they're older and they could could take these shots because i i've seen i've spoken to persons who like lived away right and did not they went they tried to go that route where they didn't know shots and stuff but then when they came down here and they had to get into the school system then they had to so they would have gone as older children like 10 12 and stuff and gotten their shots and stuff right so it's something that could be done after, right? But I am hoping that I would never have to go that route. Because as I said, he has to be an example. I want him to be an example of, you know, 100% us living for the Lord. I don't know how some people would take that, but that is, that's, that is what I have decided, right? And um, so, right? So, so I was saying it, but I knew in the back of my head that that is not what I was going to actually do, right? And a little while after that now, you know, because in my head I'm like, Lord, I know you're hearing me, you know, but, you know, I'm just feeling kind of a little overwhelmed today, you know? And um, so I happened to go on Facebook and I end up and saw... You know, we just had like the goat race and, and all that stuff in Buku. And I saw this, um, a news article video on one of those news pages where they were highlighting this, an art, artist, right? I believe they're from Trinidad. I'm not sure if it's from Trinidad or Jamaica or one of those places. I think it's from Trinidad, right? And the song that this artist sings is riddled with bad word like swearing like raw like nasty vulgar lyrics right and the video i am seeing has these little kids has these little kids singing along and this artist is saying sing it with me sing the words and whatever and and they're kind of moving the mic when it reached the bad word but you're still hearing the children actually saying the bad word and these children are like 10 8 9, 10, 11, them kind of ages. And I'm like, oh my goodness. You know? And, um, so after I, I mean, I was pissed at first, eh? Because I was like, if I was there, and it's a fact, if I was there, I don't know that I had to get police to escort me out or some kind of thing. I don't know. So after reading it some more, I saw that, like, the promoters and stuff, the organizers of the event did schedule the, the, artist for late into the night after 11 or something like that giving people the opportunity to decide what they want to take part in so that by that time they would leave or whatnot if you know if they know that this is the hour this person coming on and whatever so in my mind now i'm thinking where are the parents where are the parents so people want to blame the promoters and and yeah if i had a chance to talk to this artist i would tell her about christ and uh you know she mightn't listen but i would have told her right but oh my gosh but these parents has a responsibility where are they and somebody was saying that these are you know their parents these children their parents has given up on them and and but we have to be our brother's keepers you telling me there were no adults there that that got horrors that felt some type of way about that Oh my goodness, it was just, it was bad, it was bad. So seeing that now, I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't, because these are the children that my son would have to interact with, you know, and I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I, I just can't, right? I, I, I just, I can't. So, so that put a spark back in me that definitely, most definitely, that 
we are homeschooling that's what we're doing so that i would be able to implement the bible and teachings of god into his learning and teach him you know when he around his parents and stuff he'll be able to learn skills that he would actually need to be a uh, uh, right standing you know good adult in society right and for the lord because i really want him to bring so much glory to the kingdom of the lord you know and um so yeah so so this is something i'm going to be talking about this is something i want to talk about more our experiences with homeschooling and you know the challenges and how we get through it and because as i said it's not so much of a thing down here in the caribbean you know um you know keep in mind i'm in trinidad and tobago so yeah right so this is something that i want to be talking about more um right i just so i just i, I brought myself back I, I pulled myself up and i was like okay maria you know you said that you were going to sacrifice i am making the sacrifice of my time and of myself and everything to put full hundred behind raising my son up for the lord this is something i've promised the lord and i really want to stick to this right i really want to stick to this so yeah another thing happened something happened as well the other day but i'll try and do that in another video i want to talk to i want to talk and tell people tell parents tell mothers right one these boys these babies these these sons of ours right because i'm a boy mom right i mean i have a girl as well but right now i want to talk about boys we women this is something i just always say we have these men first right because we have our sons to take care of we have them first we're the front liners right where they are concerned so it's our duty it's our responsibility to raise them up and teach them how to be good godly men right because because i'm talking to believers here and this is i mean this is who i'm addressing i don't know who would really listen to my videos you know and listen to me ranting right if you're a non-believer well all i could say is i hope that you would look at more of my videos and i hope that somehow something i say something i do something you see would plant a seed in you to let you know that god is real that he exists that christ is real that he died for you to give you a chance and opportunity to be reconciled to your creator right um and there's just no other way there's so much life so much abundance to be had in a life lived for christ and with christ right because it's all about relationship and that's what he wants with us our relationship okay so yeah we have them first and it's our responsibility to to teach them how to be godly men right yes they need to have examples of, of you know a father a father figure right um but we can nurture them train them up teach them how to be a good husband a good father you understand how to teach their wives how to 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 treat them sorry how to treat their wives how to respect their wives you know um so these same men that in so many instances are abusing us women right we have them first even you women who may not believe in the lord who might stumble on here everybody i just want to tell that raise your sons up in the right way so that they would know how to respect women and how to treat women all right um we godly women we need to teach them what to look for as well you know set good examples for them so that they can see so that they wouldn't get carried away with these images of these of these women that they see in the world you know it's just so much eh? it's a lot but we also have to be our brother's keeper we also have to like when you see children even if you know the child or not and you see a child in a in a position that you know is is harmful or is not what they're supposed 
pull up on them, pull up on them. I just tell my my a friend of mine, right, Deb. Um, we're talking. I say, Deb. I tell you from now, cause her boy is small, eh? I just be like, if I see them on the road anywhere in any kind of, place, I tell you from now, I'm bringing them here for you, and I'm dragging them here for you, I'm pulling them out of whatever situation, and you know what I mean. So we need to stop turning a blind eye. You're seeing things happening, but you rather just talk about it and say, you ain't see, you ain't see what she doing, you ain't see what he doing. Yeah, you see, yeah, that's that's Mavis son, that's Mavis daughter. You know what I mean? And you're talking and she's saying, no, no, don't do that. Get involved, right? Get involved. Sometimes the parents trying their best and they're really not seeing. They really have no clue what is happening sometimes with their children out there. All right? So let's be our brothers. Keep up, right? Um, another thing that I want to do in, as I said, another video, um, is talk about deliverance for children. This is a real thing. Um, I had a little experience, right? But I don't want to get this video tied up with that and make it be too long. But as parents, we have a duty and a responsibility to our children, even to be their spiritual leaders, their, their, their guides, their protectors. We have a responsibility to protect our children. We have an enemy. We know that. And we need to protect our children because the enemy is after our children. He is after our men. These are two things that I always tell people they are he is after our men and our children we have to protect them right so um so i'll try to do that in another video as i said but um so so this is basically it really um that i just wanted to touch base with you guys and you know and um yeah and just talk about what's been happening and little plans that I have, you know. So, as I said, I will really try my best to come on here more often and and share with you guys. And, you know, um, yeah. So, so, so I'm going to go now because I don't want this to be too long and, you know, drawn out. I'm trying to stick to shorter videos as well. You know, people, patience just not, and not there anymore. People have no way to want everything fast. <laughs> right? Um. So I really do hope that everybody is blessed. I really do hope that everyone um, is strengthening their walk and is um and it's okay i know how tough it gets i know how rough it can get sometimes but god is able just remember that god is able all right um all right so that's it for me guys thanks for clicking on my video thanks for lending an air right um yeah, and see you guys soon. All right. Bye. Look at that view, guys. Look at that view. <clears throat>